happy new year and welcome to the pink and show we are back after our festive break and at a new venue welcome to the Woolpack here on golden ball street uh, in central norwich for our first 2018 dedicated norwich city shenanigans that has james madison and alex pritchard locked in its basement and they are not coming out until february uh, i am michael bailey and over the next 30 minutes or so we will bring you all the key canaries discussion points from the festive period reflect on the latest january transfer rumors and look ahead to saturday's fa cup distraction as Norwich City welcome Chelsea to Carrow Road. Uh, we'll see if any of the regulars here at the Woolpack uh, fancy a word, although I think they're gearing up for Arsenal versus Chelsea, to be honest. Uh, plus, we've got our delightful New Year duo with me here in the pub, who this week are former long-serving City programme editor Pete Rogers and City fan and season ticket holder Alex Ware. Gentlemen, Happy New Year. How are we doing, Pete? Very well indeed. Thank you, Michael. Happy New Year to you too. Yeah. And thanks for making it because I know we were touch and go over over colds and lemsips. Yeah, little, little, little touch of uh, touch of cold, a bit of a sore throat. But I'll uh, I'll soldier on. Yes, that's the yeah. spirit. That's the spirit, Pete. Alex, thanks for coming in. This isn't your debut. It's the first time we've met, but you've done the show before. Once before on mustard, but you weren't there. I think you were ill. Oh, it definitely wasn't personal. I can tell. Now you can tell it's New Year because I've got an orange juice. Pete's got a lovely cup of tea, and we deliberately left the pot of tea there because look Fantastic, at that. Isn't it? Yeah, lovely piece of. Uh ornate china work isn't it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and alex has gone for the coke so that is uh, pretty much uh, standard uh, how it goes with of course post new year uh, now uh, we are live on uh, pinkham.com and the pinkham facebook page all being well there we go uh, and we want to hear from you too of course because we are live so be it on madison's cricket celebrations nelson's form uh, what may happen over january or of course the big cup tie on saturday get your questions comments and banter through to us here in the pub all you need to do is post your comment on the Facebook page or your question and your words will ping right through to my phone sitting here so uh, we will then of course discuss them as as was uh, now fresh from overindulging Wesley Moulihan is back to sweat off Christmas with some serious bell action with the help of you Alex it's not innuendo uh, as we bring you the latest Norwich City headlines go Alex beautiful out for a Burton, in with a roar. Seven points from nine, one desperate occasion, resting players and coming back for victories. Just the, just the standard City festive period. Go on. Let the games begin. January is up and running, the window is open and the rumours are already flowing. Pritchard, Jerome, Martin, Naismith, Oliveira. It's going to be some month. Alex. TD, uh, TT, hints at ND. Tribal has a new contract offer on the table and wants to hang around if the finer points are sorted. On Monday's evidence, who wouldn't want that to happen? We like jamming. We like, yeah, yeah, thanks. Three appearances, two wins and a blossoming reputation. Jamal Lewis is one of our own and 2018 promises to be anything he wants it to be. Take it easy, Blues. Chelsea warm up for their big date at Carrow Road with a trip to Arsenal tonight, and it's on here at the Woolpack. It would be nice for the Gunners to soften them up a tad. And finally. Thanks, John. Everyone at the Pink and Show was sad to learn of the death of former Norwich City coach and assistant boss John Faulkner over the Christmas period. The tributes from his former colleagues and players spoke volumes of the man, and I can vouch for that myself too. Rest in peace, John, and our thoughts are with his friends and family. Gents, let's talk football. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, most seem to be happy with seven points uh, from nine, and that was my bare minimum, admittedly, before the four fixtures. So how are we suited now? Well, after the, uh, the debacle that was Brentford, I looked at the next three and thought I'd be more than happy with five points. The, 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 my view was very much, we were playing two teams below us in Birmingham and Burton away from home. Let's just not lose either of those two and try and beat Millwall at home. So uh, I'd have been happy with five points. We've got the seven could and should we have got nine who knows uh, that's uh, up for debate isn't it it is indeed we can have a look at the uh, festive results uh, uh, from Dan who'll pop, pop them all on in case we didn't we didn't know what they were Alex what's your thoughts uh, well we had the wins at home it looks like Burton away was a slog <laughs> that's one word for it yeah, um, yeah perhaps the old clean sheet um, at home on Saturday on Monday sorry probably uh, could have been a help but I guess it was a good individual bit of skill but I think that was just disappointing going into half time but we got seven out of nine so can't really complain no complaints that's, that's fair, fair points um, in terms of Brentford it, it was a real down I mean the atmosphere was pretty toxic for that game as well wasn't it Alex is, is that something that's going to go away a little bit now because that, that was a difficult one yeah I think it's just managing people's expectations really it's 
it's the frustrations of watching the team get so far and perhaps not ending with a chance. Um, we're uh, every now and again. I think we need to see a cross. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's be let's be honest. Here. I can't remember the last time there was a home game. There wasn't a, some booing at some point. Be it during during build up play, during half time, during full. To some point, there's been booing in pretty much every home game. I'm sure. Yeah, everyone will probably say they're entitled to. It. I'm not. I, I'm, I'm not saying. I'm not, it's I'm literally a description. A I'm not a fan of the booing personally. I, I think yeah, at times it happens, but perhaps. At half time was perhaps a little bit much because it was a frustrating first half, but we still had another half to go. Well, let's get your view on this, Pete, because we've already had messages in. St- Steve Trivet, good luck with Mr. Pessimistic Peter Rogers. Oh, that's a bit harsh from Mr. Trivet there, I think, really. But uh, no, I was, as I say, I was more than pleased with the uh, the seven points from nine, and uh, as I said, I'd, I'd have been happy with five really after the Brentford game. But, but I mean, that was a tricky one, wasn't it, Brentford? It was a really difficult occasion in the end. I mean, they did well really to bounce back over those three games because of how tough that was. I think they were just glad they had two away games, weren't they? Really, I don't think they would have wanted to go back to that sort of poisonous and toxic atmosphere that we had at the end of the, the Brentford game in a hurry. But uh, having got four points from the two away games, that made life a little easier against Millwall. And you know, if you could have picked an opponent, I suppose Millwall, who haven't won at Carrow Road since 1968 and haven't won an away game all season, might have been one of the, one of the ones you'd have perhaps chosen. And hadn't won an away game uh, all season so far, too, of course. Uh, the Burton team selection. I mean, Daniel Farker got a lot of stick for that. Even I, I knew there were changes coming, and even I was surprised with how many changes. And I still feel they were maybe one or two too many. But are we, we, we forgiving him because of the Millwall result, I guess? Um, I think just because the two games are so close together, uh, I guess you can see why, especially with Jamal Lewis perhaps coming into the team and coming off the back of an injury. Um, it, I guess he probably thought to keep the strongest 11 for the home games and probably hoped we still had the quality, even with the changes, to, to beat a, a Burton team. Which would normally be a fair shout. And, and also Millwall getting that extra 24 hours rest, which when you're talking about two two days or three days rest, that's a huge difference at that point. And, and Norwich actually did, in fairness to them, look really strong as the Millwall game wore on. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, I mean, the Millwall game was arguably one of the best ones we've seen at Carrow Road this season. I think most Norwich fans go along with the view that they want to be entertained and I thought that was one of the, the, the better games to watch we created chances perhaps could and should have scored more uh, yeah, it, was a, it was a decent game to watch you know and that's as I say that's what we we go to Carroll Road for is it to be entertained and hopefully see Norwich win, win the game as well spot on and uh, Paul oh Mikhevilog sorry Paul I think that's your, your name apologies if I got that wrong I mean, he, he asked it, whether the Millwall result justified uh, Farker's selection for the Burton game and I guess we're saying yes aren't we I'd say yes Spot on. That's good enough for that. Uh, JB, a messy guest. Thanks for getting in touch, uh, John. He says, can't wait for Saturday. The match is nationally televised in the US. So he's going to get to watch it in the US. John, lucky you. Uh, we'll be looking forward to hearing your thoughts on the other side of it, of course. Uh, right, uh, let's take a moment uh, to hear from Daniel Farker and my man of the match. Not only mine, it must be said. Uh, Tom Tribal uh, speaking to us following Monday's win against Millwall. I think it was crucial and important for us because in the recent weeks we had to look a bit okay how big is the distance to the positions you don't want to be on the relegation positions and right now with seven points we uh, improved our position very much we climbed a bit the table and right now we are, I think we are also allowed right now to, um, to watch what happens above so I think in the recent weeks we were not allowed so we had to keep the distance and improve our situation but with this win it was a little bit like a like a little final for us today and with this win, I think, um, yeah, this really tough period is, is completely done. And we are also allowed right now to, to watch a bit, OK, what's, what happens above us? Because we have right now in the league um, some really some really difficult games uh, facing teams who are in the playoff positions like uh, like Bristol or like uh, Sheffield United. And yeah, but right now we have a situation we can go into this game much more relaxed. So there's not such a big pressure, but we can see, OK, if we're able to, to win some points out of this really difficult games, uh, we could even climb the tables. How far? Uh, I don't know at this moment, but uh, the moment um, um, feels really good right now. I think um, the coach had a had a very good moment to put me back uh, in the team in Birmingham. I felt very good, and um, yeah, so I'm very happy to to be back and um, show. What I, what I can. I'll probably keep asking you this until something changes, but yeah. because your current contract runs out in the summer, and yeah. I know the club have got an option, is is it in the back of your mind that you want to prove yourself so you can stay here for a, a second season? Yeah, yeah I can. Possible? I can imagine for sure to stay here, and um, I, I get an um, get an offer from from the club for for a new contract, 
Um, You've got one. Yeah, but okay. um, we still um, keep in touch about it because it's not just up to me. So everybody knows that I feel very comfortable here and uh, I can imagine to stay, but it's just not uh, my, um, how you say, it's decision. not just decision, decision right. Who, so, who, who else's decision is it? Your yeah, uh, so yeah, we, we decide everything <laughs> together. Yeah, but uh, she's very happy with uh, how it works um, the last few months and right now. But um, yeah, there's also the the manager is an important part and the coach as well. And they want that I stay as well to extend my contract. But um, you have to speak uh, about some things. So and it, sometimes it takes some it takes some time. And you can see much more from those guys over at the uh, Pinken YouTube channel. Make sure you check that out. And there's loads of other content, of course. You may have seen my Christmas message over Christmas. Hilarious. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, uh, forget about it. Uh, let's concentrate on Tom Tribal because we just heard from him there. Uh, uh, man of the match for me on, on Monday. One of the real... I mean, it's, it's so funny how they had to... He still had to have a trial and we had to yeah. wait for him, didn't he, to make an impact. But as far as recruits from the summer goes, he's, he's right up there. Yeah, he was a guy who kind of came in almost a bit under the radar and hearing about him, he seemed like he had a lot of promise at Verta Brain and I think he even admitted perhaps he had a, an agent in his ear a bit too much when he was younger and he seems to have been justifying a contract offer and I'd love for him to stay. I mean, I admit that's a man of the match for me on Monday as well. And they're in a nice position because it's not actually... I mean, Norwich have an option on him in the summer anyway, so they effectively have a two-year deal if they want it, but it probably says a lot about the impact he's made that they've gone, well, hang on, we need to give him a bigger deal. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's fair to say him, Zimmerman, uh, Steeperman, I think they've been players who the club have perhaps took a bit of a gamble on, brought in maybe you know, two, three or four of those kind of players on small salaries and free transfers, and they're not all going to come off, but Tribal certainly looks to be one who, who certainly has done thus far. Yeah, he hasn't signed his new contract yet, and there's obviously a few things to be, to be discussed on, which is good. Uh, Madison and Alex Pritchard, a joy to see those two guys in the same team. It's not perfect, because I still think it all gets a bit stodgy when it doesn't work, but when it does work, they just cut through the lines, and we saw that with the winning goal on, on Monday. Absolutely. I think the, the point you made there about it being a bit stodgy isn't helped by Nelson Oliveira sort of dropping deep a lot, and you end up with sort of three players all on the edge of the area trying to do these clever, intricate things, and you know, as nice as that is, there's never then anyone on the end of it to sort of finish it off sometimes, is there? But uh, yes, I mean, Madison and, and Pritchard, and, and particularly Madison all season, really, where would we be without his goals in reality? And you saw that first hour against Brent, uh, against Burton without those two. And uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of fans are a little bit fearful. That's obviously what's to come next season. It's a difficult one because Wes Houlihan obviously got the gig there. And he, he does, I, it just maybe his age is starting to show because we've got two players who are that much more youthful, who are able to play with a greater tempo than, than Wes can manage, given that Wes is, you know, is getting on a bit, I suppose. <laughs> I guess so. I think Wes has still got the, the pass in him, I think. I think the, the game Wes plays doesn't always need the pace and I think that's where he's you know he still offers us something and I guess when it's a, a long season and as soon as an injury comes up we, we still need all of them but on um, I'm just admiring you pouring your tea I, th I think we we need some sort of clip of you pouring your tea I think that would be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly clear and too true. Um, I, Alex, it was interesting speaking to some of the fans. Sorry, I did cut you off a little bit there, but it was interesting speaking to the, some of the fans before the game and on on Monday. And you know, some are really happy to wait with Daniel, and, and some are a little bit more hit and bits about where things are, are going to go. Uh, yeah. Do you consider Daniel Farker to be who's going to be in charge for the foreseeable? And I don't mean like the next few weeks. I mean for the next season or two or three. I think so. I think as a Norwich fan, things have been up and down, let's say, over the past few year, few years. And when you, it just seems like people have been on the back of the board and and Dinia and, and Michael when then they've actually made a change this this year. We've got Weber in and we've got Fark in, and they are changing so much about the club to perhaps bring the club up with the times a bit in more more in line with clubs like Southampton that seems where people have been asking for change and now we've got the change so I think it's, it's a strange thing you have to be a bit patient or this year is kind of in transit or whatever but I'm happy to see it and I'm 
he's got my patience at least. That's good. But you have been critical over the course of this season. And, and let's be clear, Pete, I mean, the, the expectations were still that Norwich should be challenging this season. And a lot of fans, some of the anger at Burton really took me back, actually. The fans who made all that effort got to see what they watched. They weren't happy. No, I mean, obviously, I think, first of all, people always want to see the strongest side put out, don't they, to try and go and win a game. I think also the fact that we went to, Bur- to Birmingham, played well and won, and we did it with what you call sort of, you know, round pegs in round holes, if you like, and then we changed everything around for the, for the Burton game, which seems, you know, let's be honest, I mean, this was Burton who had lost their last seven home games on the spin. We weren't playing Barcelona in the new Camp, were we, you know? It was a game we had an opportunity to win, and I know Mark Hughes has obviously had a lot of criticism, hasn't he, for fielding a weakened side at Chelsea, but even if he'd have put his best Stoke side out at Chelsea, he was still going to lose two or three nil anyway, wasn't he? But that's the reality of it. Now, we were playing Burton. As I say, I think he should have played a stronger side than he did, realistically. Uh, where's it going overall? Well, I think it's fair to say there isn't any money in the pot to do anything other than soldier on with what we've got, is there really? That's the basic facts of it. You know what, Pete? You have taken us delightfully into this. It is January, which can only mean one thing. There you go, that's the the sting. Uh, It's been a little while since you'll have seen that, but uh, it is a classic and we've resurrected it. Sorry that my gormless face is still on it. Uh, We've barely had a few hours of the transfer window, yet we seem to already have so much to discuss. I love spinning around like a headless chicken for a month. It's one of my favourite periods of time. Um, Let's get the bare facts down. What do you guys want to see from January? Tell us one thing you want to see from January. Matt Jarvis sold, Stephen Naismith sold, uh, maybe Alex, uh, sorry, uh, Cap- Nelson Oliveira sold. Uh, I'll, I'll take those three. Oh, absolutely, yeah. How much would you accept for Nelson Oliveira? Two million pounds. Uh, really? Wouldn't you? Not when you could get more. I'd be surprised if they get much more than that for him. His agent's doing a very good job so far, I think. Alex, you? I'd like to see Oliveira stay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, more than two million pounds. So. Yeah, I think it seems like so far everyone we've been linked with, well, we haven't been linked to. We've been talking about who we're going to sell. So it is your, your Jarvis's, but I guess you can't see him going anywhere injured. But it's your Stephen Naismiths, the the people that are high on the wage bill. Dare I say, even Russell Martin. You dare say it, and I'm sure it will come up. Let's get through some of these questions. Uh, keep your questions coming in on the phone. Uh, James Balls, would you be happy to see both Jerome and Nelson move on this month if it means we keep Pritchard and Madison? Obviously, with a couple of bargain replacements, or are they all worth keeping? <laughs> Madison and Pritchard are the jewels in the crown, aren't they? And they will be sold, whether it be January or the summer. Uh, I, I guess Oliveira will move on again, whether it be this, this window or the next one. Jerome, who knows, there's been a lot of speculation about him uh, with a number of championship clubs uh, interested in him. I think Birmingham are one, Sunderland and Derby the other. So it'll uh, be interesting to see. He's a, he's a player in demand. I mean, I can certainly see Cameron leaving, but him leaving wouldn't be for a lot of money and might not give them money to actually replace him. Whereas if they sold out Nelson, they would have some money in and they could replace him. Then. Yeah, but I guess Oliveira's a finisher for me and uh, Jerome isn't. I think if you're going to lose one, personally, I'd rather see Jerome go, but I wasn't sure about the bargain replacements line. <laughs> you would want to get some quality in. <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah, that's a fair point. Um, it, it's interesting with Madison and Pritch. I don't know. I agree with you, Pete, that at some point they're going to go because Norwich have got a lot of difficult decisions in the summer if they don't go up. If they don't go up. Um, but Pritchard and Madison are in quite different situations. I, I Alex Pritchard signed his deal as soon as they'd come down from the Premier League, he's probably on a lot more money, he's a few years older, and of course we've seen today Huddersfield uh, sniffing around, they're definitely interested, I don't think there has actually been a, a bid, and we won't get into the semantics of bids, but clearly Huddersfield wants him, I mean, how, eight, eight million I think they were spent on him, what what sort of level is a good level for Alex Pritchard, he's still got two and a half years on his deal I think, or one and a half. He has, uh you'd certainly at least want to get your money back hopefully a bit more uh, but since he's been here he's had one or two injuries and he hasn't really had a full season we've seen a lot of bursts of him and he's looked really good in, in patches uh, but I think if someone came in with you know if it was a Huddersfield it was £10 million down payment and another two if, he's, if they stay up you'd do a deal with them wouldn't you? I mean, they've got all the money, haven't they? I mean, now Norwich are out of this pocket, effectively. You can look at the Premier League and go, ha, they've got a lot of money. It is two and a half years left on his current deal, so there's no pressure there particularly. 
I think everyone would like to see him stay. Um, I think Pritchard's been offering us something just slightly different lately. He seems to be an attacking midfielder who also has an eye for goal. You see him take shots, so I'm not sure I wouldn't like him to go at all, but unfortunately it's one of the, the things of football, isn't it? But again, I agree, if we're going to get the same money for a couple more, it would just then be who, who we can get in to replace him. Don't, don't get me wrong, I love Alex Pritchard. Yeah. I think he's a cracking player. And it's the way that Pritch will, will shoot from range and take ownership, just like James Madison, who in the second half on Saturday, I thought, just got on the ball and really you know, took the game by the scrap. scrap the, the, way, the way they play is what fans like, isn't it? As you say, they're, they're not afraid to have a shot. They'll, they'll try things. So they're not conservative or nervous with what they do. They'll always try and... Uh, entertain supporters and that's uh, that's all important I did, much so at the moment I did have to smile though when I saw the Norwich City calendar and saw that James Madison was down as December 2018 so I don't know who made that decision yes. to put him on members either oh, no, well simply. do you know do you know is it is it a conscious obviously it is a conscious decision where they go but do they try and think about that sort of stuff because you're right it does seem a bit optimistic I think brave or stupid if you're one of the two <laughs> uh, things. but no in all seriousness yeah, I think whoever has the job it's a difficult task because you have to sell these calendars in September and October but therefore you've got to decide in sort of August and September who's going to be on for 18 months. So it's not an easy task. No. I'd, I'd like to be in that meeting to see how it works. <laughs> We're going to have to put Adam Phillips in, in uh, December, which is a nice segue into the fact that he's been loaned to uh, Cambridge United for the rest of the season, one hopefully for next year, Adam Phillips. Uh, we've had the Nelson Oliveira links to Wolves. We'll see how busy his agent gets. Uh, you did mention uh, Russell Martin and Stephen Naismith, both... It seems to me they're, they're going to end up on loan somewhere or other and won't necessarily na- save Norwich all their wages, but it'll save a, a bit of them. It, it's weird, isn't it? Because you'd have thought they could have played a part, but it does seem that Daniel Farker is, whatever reason, it's like they're not going to be involved now. Well, especially with Naismith, he just doesn't seem to see the, the value for money, whether since he's been fit for the last three, four weeks, there's a bit of the Lewis Grabham benching kind of reserves treatment for him. Um, I can see that Russell Martin giving him, he only had his new contract in the summer, wasn't it? So, you know, a bit of continuity, whether his ability has kept up with perhaps what our contract offer was in the summer. If if he is, unfortunately, a player getting towards the end of his, not quite the end of his career, but, you know, the tail end rather than the start, but just get the impression he'll be on decent money as well. Well, indeed. Uh, Neil Austin, who are you expecting to go in January, Michael? You're asking me, Neil. Um, any surprises? I'm not, not sure. I mean, I, the, the figures we've kind of said, and I do think Cam and probably the experienced heads, heads will go. Uh, Nathan Dack says Tribal must stay, which I think will happen. And uh, there was one question which I wanted to... Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I've got it here. Who, who comes in? Have you got a name who you would like to see come in? Someone who, if we told someone... Because someone asked me that, and I was like... I haven't really thought about this. I'm going to need a bit of time, and I'm, I'm not sure. It's very difficult, isn't it? I mean, until you know who you're going to sell and what money that's going to, you know, as, as we said earlier on, if Cameron Jerome goes, it'll probably be for quite a small fee. If Nelson Oliveira is to be sold, it'll be for a slightly greater fee. So depending on what you've got to play with, would, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, you have to look at what's what you've got to play with, first of all, don't you? I mean, I was even trying to think of the players I've seen this year in the Championship, but even then I was kind of like... Someone's really caught my eye, to be honest. But you, Alex? Yeah, I guess you're looking at the top top championship striker or lower Premier League who's just being inched out of the team. And I mean, he might be slightly against uh, above us now, but someone like Dwight Gale that we've been linked with for so many windows is the kind of person you'd kill oh, for. Oh, Alex. Well, you never know. But you never. But I think see. you probably do. <laughs> uh, I think you know. I think you know. Gale up front for Norwich and Dwight Gale. I do agree. <laughs> that's a classic Pete one line. I love that. Right. Uh, that's it for the transfer chat, but I'm sure we'll be coming back to it uh, over the course of the month. Absolutely. And probably for the rest of the night too. Uh, it is a new year, though, which means a new push for this. Yes, Dan, thank you very much. Uh, last time out was before Christmas, so we don't expect you to remember it. But basically, Sam Walden and Neville Townsend did battle in a titanic mid-table contest that saw them leave with their pride intact, I think. As for the leaderboard, uh, it's still those who spent their childhoods in pubs leading the way, and that may never change. Now, 
as you may have noticed, uh, the scores there are half what they were before Christmas. Uh, that's because from here on in, the guys uh, and girls are going to get 30 seconds to get their A game flowing, or maybe that should be B game. Uh, so, Pete and Alex, this is your turn. Let's make some space here. Uh, you have 30 seconds to flip as many bar mats as you wish. Uh, you know the rules. You've got one arm. carrying your You do it at the same time. You've got the same 30 seconds. Um, the winner gets a much prized selfie with Wesley Moulihan, of course. And let's see who's more Robert Flick than Flicky Van Volsprinkle. Thank you, Alex, for laughing. And play. Flip the bird. On Dan. Dan ready? He looks primed and ready. Dan's ready. On Dan's Three, signal. Two, one, go. Go. We're off. Away we go nice and quickly there, gents. A good thing is I've only got 30 seconds to commentate. And this time's going to fly by. Pete's already on two. Alex is claiming a two there. Um, uh, the Pete seems to be... Well, that, that'll do. Yeah, it's a unique... Unique... Um, technique from these two Pete's just about caught them I'm not really sure that's the way you should play it but there we go keep going Pete keep going you're on four you're on four I'm counting Alex got a nice four ten seconds left final push Pete's got another one there this is great timing Alex has got another one these are going to be great scores it's going to be a whole new ball game oh Pete almost and there is it that's it don't don't count those Pete what have you got four well I've got five here but I didn't catch the five so I got four caught four no, no, but you had five in your five stack. Five in, in your it, stack, yeah. that's fine. Five in your stack. Five was my last one. Five there for Alex. That's two fives, uh, which is mid-table respectability off the top of my head, I think. If, if a little bit playoffs, maybe top six. Happy with that? I'm over the moon. I didn't practice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get that extra 30 seconds practice that our predecessors did either, did we? So, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, well, you get a selfie. Have every of you brought your phones? Yes. Go on then, Alex. Do a selfie with, with Wesley Moulihan. Try and get Pete. Pete, you do it as well. Um, we'll let these guys do that because that's very exciting, of course. Uh, we'll let you know, of course, that myself, uh, Paddy and Dave Freezer, let's look at that, Alex getting nice and close. Uh, myself, Paddy and Dave will be at uh, Carrow Road on Saturday for the visit of Chelsea in the FA Cup, which we're all very excited about. Pete, you've actually got to turn your phone on. I have turned it on. I was professional. See, I turned it off in case someone rang me during your broadcast, you see, Michael. So, Aeroplane uh, mode. Aeroplane mode. Yeah, you can, you can, you can break, break our stride to take the selfie. And we'll, and we'll share them because people love seeing these things. Probably. Uh, Dan, roll the sting again. There we go. I can see a healthy future for Flip the Bird over the rest of 2018. <laughs> We'll see if anyone beats uh, the top scorers. Right, let's have a championship refresh, shall we? Because it's been uh, four games since we had a look at the championship picture. Uh, and uh, we're not going to go through all the results, obviously, because that would be boring. So instead, here's how the table looks. Wolves look untouchable at the top, owed in no small part to Ryan Bennett and John Ruddy. Derby were the big winners, while Cardiff, Sheffield United and Ipswich lost ground. But the chasing pack of the top six has certainly closed up. Middlesbrough now have Tony Pulis in charge, following Gary Monk sacking just before Christmas. City have made up some places too, and could yet return to the top half soon if they can maintain their form. Bolton have improved, while the revivals at Sunderland and Hull have proved short-lived. Wednesday remain managerless following Carlos Carvajal's switch to Swansea. Burton won 3-0 at Hillsborough following their goalless draw with Norwich. So Norwich returned to championship action at Bristol City on Saturday week, but this weekend is all about the FA Cup. There are some cracking ties around, and these are only a select few, including derbies, possible upsets, some City loanies taking on Premier League opposition with Shrewsbury, and of course, City hosting last season's Premier League champions, Chelsea. We'll get back on the uh, FA Cup uh, in a moment, but just looking at City's situation and, and the table in the Championship, gents, where, where, where are Norwich at the moment? How, Daniel Farker said we can start looking a little bit higher. We're not sure how high, but a little bit higher. How high are you looking, Alex? A little higher than where we are at the moment. I think... 12th? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, I'd like to... We've got nine points off the playoffs, so it's amazing how quickly things can change around... I remember we went away to, to Arsenal and we were talking about, you know, perhaps we'll slip in the playoffs at the end of the season and suddenly we were almost in them. But obviously we had a bit of a downturn of form then. But I can see the next couple of months, a few nice string of results. We could be getting towards that playoff kind of area. But, you know, that I think 
Just, just getting in the playoffs end of the season, that's, that's the best we can hope for, I think. That would be that would be wonderful. Wolves class apart this year, aren't they, Pete? Oh, they're, yeah. I mean, uh, let's be honest, they've had money, but they've spent it very wisely, haven't they? They've, they've got an excellent side, they're great to watch, they're, they've got pace, power, they score goals. Uh, yeah, I mean, they look as if they're the sort of the Man City of the Championship, if you like, aren't they? They've got a looks and like an unassailable lead there. And I would have thought, you know, Derby, Villa and maybe Middlesbrough for the for the second slot, perhaps. Yeah, it'd be interesting how Wolves get on against Swansea, really, won't it? Because um, clearly Swansea Premier League opposition, but they're struggling. So if, if Wolves can wipe them aside, then we'll really know what we've been up against. Um, and uh, is Tony Pulis in at, at Middlesbrough, which is really interesting. And so for Wednesday managerless as well. And then, I don't know, it seems like they, they may be really lost their way at the moment and I'm not really sure what their next move is you think about who they could possibly appoint and I'm not too sure there are many options I mean Pulis was a bit of a surprise going to Middlesbrough I always think of him as a manager who you bring in when you're trying to stay up rather than go on and get achievement he's a, a Lenny Lawrence Houdini type isn't he you know, you, you, you know he keeps he kept Stoke up all those years kept West Brom up kept Palace up but is he the sort of chap who's going to inspire a promotion I don't know maybe he will uh, Sheffield Wednesday yeah, they're, they're, they're struggling at the moment I mean they've Lost 3-1 here and didn't look too clever that night, did they? Quite indeed. Let's go through some of these messages, uh, shall we? Mark Davies, go get Bradley Dack. Now, this is interesting because I actually saw one tweet, one Twitter handle uh, suggesting that um, should uh, Pritchard be sold, Norwich have already lined up Bradley Dack to, Dack to replace him, which given you know Pritchard hasn't been sold yet, and I don't even think Huddersfield have made their bid quite yet. Uh, it's, um, you know, it's good to see people progressing in how they can actually get uh, uh, targets for players that Norwich haven't even sold yet. That's good work. Um, and uh, Nathan Dack, possibly a relation, who knows? Uh, we need a raw and hungry League One or two striker. James Balls, bargains can also be quality. Tom Tribal, for example, absolutely. And uh, John Messigas, I would like to see Ben Woodburn come on loan and sell Oliveira. And I guess uh, Ben Woodburn is, is also being linked with uh, Sunderland, of course, with uh, Chris Coleman in charge. Right, shall we uh, switch focus to the FA Cup? Uh, are we actually looking forward to this or fearing it? Because it's Chelsea... And it's going to be pretty pretty tough. Yes, it's just one of those games that we'll see what happens. I mean, if we get knocked out and... <laughs> I'm not really too bothered about the FA Cup, to be honest. <laughs> see, this is the thing. I've been calling it a distraction all yeah. week. And, and, you know, Pete, when you were doing the programme 20 or however long years ago, would you have called the FA Cup a distraction? I always used to pray for an away tie because obviously it would mean, you know, it's extra work doing the home programmes. But uh, uh, there's an insight. Yeah. But uh, I mean, as far as the draw is concerned, as someone who's done uh, 82 of the 92 grounds, I was hopeful of a Newport County away or something like that to to pick off a new ground. So Chelsea at home was a bit disappointing. But from the club's point of view, nothing to lose, is there? It's on the television, which will be a bit of extra money for them. And you know, if we lose three nil, we lose three nil, don't we? It's it's a it's a free a free hit, really, isn't it? Chelsea. No one's expecting us to do much so uh, go for it yeah I mean I say distraction of course you, you probably need something to be to be fighting for something in the league for it to be a distraction from it but I mean is it one of those where Norwich is, uh, Norwich are suited to, to better sides as a horrible cliche because they could well get mullered 5-0 but is there that element because you know they did very well at Arsenal did extremely well at Arsenal, and uh, obviously this is that was away from home. This is on our own patch, and I think we should be able to give you know Chelsea a, a run for their money as such. I don't think it'll be a four or five nil job, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see we'll see how it pans out. We're not both laughing at that, Pete. Yeah, touch wood. Well done. I mean, it, I, I, Chelsea are playing tonight, of course, so you know they're only going to have half the recovery time Norwich will have. But as uh, as my colleague Chris Wise pointed out in in the office today, they've also got two full strength 11s that could probably beat Norwich. Yeah, I guess um, it will be a good opportunity for our defence. <laughs> Which actually is an interesting point because Sean Raggett is back uh, from his Lincoln loan, and we seem to have spoke. We seem to have talked. So we've definitely spoken more than we've seen him in action. Um, there's actually I can't really see him playing in this game because if they do, they can't loan him out for the second half of the season. And for the sake of one game, it would seem like a bit of a, a risk because he can only play for two this year. That, that's right. So that, that's going to pretty much rule him out. You would have thought, wouldn't you? Uh, getting back to whether the Cup's a distraction or not I think if you're Wolves it's a distraction if you're Sunderland it's a distraction if you're Norwich Ipswich Nottingham Forest you know mid-table billies who ain't going to be in the playoffs and probably aren't going to go down you'd like to go as, as far as you can in the Cup wouldn't you because it keeps the, the momentum going and a bit of excitement but obviously we've been handed a, a very tough task in round three to get past Chelsea so uh, been nice to have perhaps got them in the fifth or sixth round having got a few under our belt a bit like we did with the, the League Cup run you know and gave a good account of ourselves at Arsenal having won the two home games against uh, 
Was it Swindon and Charlton, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, spot on. Um, now, I don't know how many kids watch us. If you do, hi, kids. Uh, you may all think that Chelsea were always like this, but I did a little bit of digging today. Um, now, Norwich haven't beaten Chelsea in 13 attempts. That goes back to 1994. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's realistic. Uh, but before that, they only lost six games out of 32, going back to 72 against, against Chelsea. Chelsea didn't used to be much cop, did they, Pete? Chelsea would have been in the second division and we'd have been in the first division for an awful lot of those years, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Ram. It's fine. I, I remember the pre-Abramovich days, but, well, they're another class nowadays, <laughs> aren't they? In, in wealth and quality, I think yeah. it's fair to say. OK, uh, what, so what should Daniel Farker do with it? We'll get, we'll get into the 11s at the moment, but what, what is, is this game for Daniel Farker, Alex? I think it's just... Um, another opportunity to try and play a consistent team obviously we've had a few changes with the the fixtures being close by I think when we've got almost a week and then a week till the next game after this I'd say play the same 11. We've got a little note here from Neil Austin one of the most notable things in the first half Monday was the lack of width down the right Pinto looks knackered trying to get up and down the line and he does do that a lot um, and playing both James Madison and Alex Pritchard means we are quite narrow, which is a fair point. Let's have a look at your 11s then, shall we, gents, in terms of who you would pick if you were in the dugout come uh, Saturday evening's game. 5.30 kick-off, don't forget, against Chelsea, live on BT Sport. Uh, I think Jake fancied a short trip to Norwich probably for the weekend. Um, Dan, are you ready? Who are we going to do first? Alex. Alex, let's have a look at your 11 then. Talk us through this. Well, it's exactly the same. I've gone... As unchanged. you just said. <laughs> As I, sp- I spoiled it, didn't I? <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it's a good opportunity to try and get some consistency, really, especially with the back four, um, with Lewis coming into the team. He's he's looked great. I think we were, no, not many people had seen much of him before the season, and it was obviously some hype, and it was a shame he got injured at the start of the year, but he's absolutely slotted in great. Yeah, but he's clearly a guy with a very big future, Jamal Lewis, and we'll no doubt get to talk about him a lot over the coming weeks. Pete? Only a slight tweak in yours? Absolutely, I mean, just just like Alex, really, I think the most important thing to do is have some continuity, play your strongest team, and, and my only change from the Millwall game would be to give Cameron Jerome a run up top rather than uh, Oliveira. I think Oliveira's game has seen him drop deep and become a little bit more involved in the, the number 10 role almost and get almost in the way of the Madison Pritchard creativity rather than be on the end of some of those things. So uh, I think although there is a, a lack of width down the right, Murphy down the left, can get down the wing and get a cross in and uh, yeah, I'd give Jerome a run out up, up top on Saturday brilliant stuff you haven't already sold Nelson have you well I might have done <laughs> <laughs> there we go uh, Joe Meads uh, surely a right back has to be a priority if Russ if, if Russ leaves that is uh, yes I mean, is what I'm going to say to that yes I imagine right back is very much high on, on the list uh, Connor Pease we will need a Premier League striker who doesn't play in the first team Oliveira is not good enough Harvey Monk I'm going to the game the Chelsea game I presume looking forward to it lots of exclamation marks and three of these which is always good good emoji work there I like that Craig Matlas, I love the FA Cup for one a league game so we can go above Ipswich only two points in it will Norwich finish above Ipswich this season gents yes I don't think you can really get much of a fag paper between the two of them at the moment, can you? Was it two points at the minute? Uh, I mean, they can't finish, well, they could finish level, but it's unlikely. Unlikely, no. Uh, let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, Sean, the cameraman, he's a big Ipswich fan. He's looking very sad at the moment, very sad. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, why, are, why are the tickets for Chelsea not on general sale? I thought they were. Are they not on general sale? Pete, do you know? I don't honestly know. No, I did speak to someone the other day who said that you had to be a season ticket holder or member to get them. Whether I think there might be a bit of a concern from the club's point of view about away supporters getting into home areas, etc. Perhaps that's why they've done it. I don't know. But I think there's still plenty left if someone wants to, to buy some, isn't there? That's an interesting point. It is really good value, by the way. I think it's 15 quid for adults. So for a game, at least going to watch Chelsea, if you're going to be th- so inclined. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, Connor Pease. We can't beat Burton, let alone Chelsea, but I think Farker should put a strong team out like we did against Millwall. If so, we have a chance, absolutely. And Roger Martins, finally. Posh have a tremendous record over the last 10 years in unearthing lower league and non-league gems, all sold for big money. What's their secret? Which is an interesting point because um, I think Norwich have signed an uh, under-19 player called Simon, uh, Simon Power, who has come, I think he's come from the Irish leagues, a bit of a non-league talent, fairly raw, but someone who's going to come through the, the academy system now. And that, there's a lot more of that. We've already seen it this year. And I guess this is kind of what Stuart Webber is planning to do over the next few years. This is yeah. quite a, a longer-term view. 
I hope so. I think it, it's something we've always tried to do, just we haven't been able to find that gem, really. I mean, we had McGrandles came in with big hopes and he didn't really get near the, the first team. So I'd like to think this Stuart Webb has hopefully got a good eye for players. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. He's, he's, the track record was OK at Huddersfield. We'll see how we got on here. Uh, right, I think that only leaves uh, key man come Saturday evening and predictions. So, Pete, key man? I think well, there's going to be two key men, I think, and that's going to be Tribal and Tetty because they're going to have to protect our back four and uh, try and sort of stifle a lot of the Chelsea attack. So they're going to have a, a big role to play you know, as defensive midfielders, I think. Scoreline, 2-0 uh, Chelsea. I think we can keep it respectable. Any Chelsea player you don't want to see play? Hazard, I suppose, really. He could cause us a lot of danger, couldn't he? But I don't think they'll be playing the likes of him, will they? He'll be playing tonight and, uh, and I guess not on Saturday. Let's hope so. Alex? I think Gunn's going to have a busy day. So he'll <laughs> be a good test for him, won't it? <laughs> exactly. Perhaps he'll be our key man. And uh, I agree, if we keep it a you know, respectable result, I don't think... If we don't lose, that'd be a bonus. I mean, Norwich lost 3-1 at home to them in the same division, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, William, is, I think he's got a pretty good record of scoring against Norwich, so we'll see. Uh, that's it, gents. Thank you so much. I think we're done. Uh, remember, you can catch all of this show and all of our superb Norwich City content on the Pinken Facebook page, the Pinken YouTube channel, or, of course, Pinken.com. Uh, a big thank you to all the crew, uh, to Pete and Alex for coming tonight, much appreciated. To everyone else who joined us uh, here down at the Wallpack, and of course to you for watching and getting involved, really appreciate it. I'll be at Carrow Road on Saturday evening for City's FA Cup third round visit from Chelsea. Uh, so if you see me around, say hello, be nice, don't swear. And uh, we'll be back uh, again live next week, once again from the Wallpack, uh, Wallpack on Golden Ball Street in the centre of Norwich, I assume, as long as this went well. People are saying yes. All right, we'll be back here. That's good, uh, hopefully. So, as always, if you're nearby the pub, pop in for the show, grab a pint, and then come and join us and we'll have a chat. Uh, until then, here's to the 2018 Feel Good Factor conjuring up some early fireworks on Saturday. Good night. <laughs>